What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Today is a happy day. Well, I should probably not get my hopes up anymore with this thing, but look what is back in my possession, guys. We've got the 6.0 out at the ranch. This is the first time I've owned this truck that it has actually stayed the night at the ranch. When I first bought it, we immediately jumped into building my dad's F450, so I gave him this truck to use in the meantime, and then it died. So we got it running again, got it out and about, and then we were doing some more work on my dad's F450. I let him borrow it again and it died again. Now there is a common denominator. Well, there's two common denominators in this thing. One of them is being the 6.0 engine and number two is being that uh, Papa Rhino. Apparently, uh, yeah, I mean, it's only died when he's uh, driven it. But I'm happy to have her back. I'm not getting my hopes up too high that this thing's gonna run for uh, ever because I have not gotten any continuous runtime out of it more than, I don't know, a couple weeks, a month. But I've been driving her the last couple of days and so far, so far, things are working good. So if you guys watched previous videos, you saw that I had a guy hit me up that's like, yo, let me get a stab at fixing that thing. So, okay. Had it towed to his house and uh, he calls me up. He's like, yeah, you need a high pressure oil pump, which we know there's the oil relate. Like everything we're dealing with is oil related. The 6.0 just doesn't want to start. Basically, it won't start because it can't build enough oil pressure to tell the computer that, hey, this is okay to fire up. We've got enough oil pressure. The first couple of times it was the standpipes and the little O-rings that go on the standpipe. So we've been melting O-rings on the standpipes, which leads you to believe the oil is getting too hot or we got a really bad batch of O-rings because it's happened twice. So this new guy tells me I need a high pressure oil pump. Okay, let's just go for it. Calls me up the next day or two days later. He's like, actually, you don't. It's your standpipes. Like, okay, we've already played the standpipe game, but okay. So he's like, yeah, we're just gonna forward some factory ones back in it and see what that does. That should fix all your issues. So went to his house, picked it up, uh, went to fire it up, and it took forever to start. I'm looking at the guy like, come on, guy. Like, I brought it here because it wouldn't start. He's like, no, 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 there's some air in the oil. Uh, drive it for a little while and it'll get easier to start. So let's just see. She's been sitting for a couple of days, but I have driven it a little bit and we're gonna put it to the test today with that with that trailer you see back there. But let's see if she starts up after sitting here for a few days. Here's to hoping. Ready, set, go. In all honesty, probably the quickest she's ever started since I've owned this thing. This thing's a decent truck, right? It's got 130,000 miles on it. Which for diesel is nothing, for a 6 oh, yeah, you know, ticking time bomb without putting a bunch of money into it. She's a little worse for wear. The homie Danny owned her. Don't know why he got wild and started cutting wires and stuff, but he did. It's currently got a trailer brake controller fault, which from what I've seen, there's a chance we just need to solder something in here or we need an external, ah, oh, just touched it. Oh, that means it's gonna beep the whole time I drive. Oh, it went back to sleep, maybe it won't beep. So we're gonna check that today. I gotta see if I can find a trailer hitch around here because uh, none of my trucks are here except for the 6.0 and the Bronco. Well, we got the mini truck back there, but you'll notice the hitch on this thing being two wheel drive work truck, she's real low to the ground. And in fact, that hitch height is actually what I used to determine how high I wanted to put the hitch on the mini truck. So believe it or not, these things have the exact same hitch height off the ground. And well, you'll see the coupler on the trailer is very high up because when I brought this back from Utah, we only had so big of a drop hitch. So the trailer dealer moved this all the way up so it would uh, drive level on the back of the F450. Now there's a chance our previous tenants left a hitch up in the guest house, which, you know, should have left something because they sure as hell left without paying rent. But I digress. Let's go see if there's a hitch in the guest house garage. Big Walt, say what up to everybody. Well, I found this hitch here, which is adjustable. I don't know if you can use it upside down, I'm assuming, but it's got a lock on it, which obviously, uh, well, you know, they didn't leave the key to that. But the good news is the two and five sixteenths is up, which if we put this in and we need to gain some height, this is kind of like the proper orientation right there. And I don't see why this couldn't be used up or down. This is just gonna be until we get to town and I can get an appropriate hitch for this thing. Empty, the trailer's only 4,500 pounds, it's not that heavy, but load it up, we're gonna want the right hitch. Give her a little test. Oh, geez, that is high. But it doesn't look wrong. It doesn't look wrong. Oh, man, I'm just looking at this wiring right now. I really hope this trailer wiring works. We got a four pin on a broken four pin and like a seven pin turned into a four pin. And of course, this won't just slide in. Uh, you can see how where the uh, hitch pin goes in, it's kind of mushroomed out. The inside is similar. Not as bad, but similar. So I won't let this slide in. I really hope we're not creating a permanent hitch connection here. But something tells me this might never come back out. And I'm going to regret this.
Oh, there we go. She freed up. She freed up. We're good. Get her backed up and just see if this is even going to work. I got no clue if the trailer lights work or anything. I like the backup alarm though, you know. Feels real uh, work truckish. And she's got backup sensors, believe it or not. Kind of surprised me too on this thing. Now I read the ratings on this hitch. It says uh, 10,000 pounds, so. I don't know how much we're gonna load up today. Probably be a little bit more than that. But we're not gonna go too crazy testing this thing. There's a lot of really steep hills out to my house. So I don't wanna kill this thing. Like, let's just test it with some weight first and then we'll see if we can load her down pretty heavy. Now again, I have no idea if any of this works. It all feels kind of janky. Throw our flashers on. Let's see if we have trailer lights. Be nice to have. Um. Oh, oh no! Come on, Danny. <laughs> Can't even get that. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe we, just, maybe we just need to wiggle it a little bit, or maybe they just completely disconnected it. No, everything feels like it's wired in. You know, sometimes I'm a more uh, do as I say, not as I do kind of guy. And, you know, I mean, let's just say, uh, yeah, the lights are working, but we're gonna go to Sergio to double check. Well, wish me luck, guys. Let's see how this thing. Uh, toes. I don't know how happy she's going to be. We're going to go some back roads that way. We're not going down the super, super steep grades with no trailer brakes even then. Like, even though again, it's 4,500 pounds, the truck should be able to stop it, no problem. Never said I was the smartest person in the world, you know? We'll say it's kind of nostalgic, you know, having the old crank down windows. Definitely over the whole bench seat here. I mean, we could have could have done a flip down. Come on, Ford. 2006. We couldn't have an armrest. Now, I've looked for seats online. They're very expensive. I don't know about junkyards where you guys are at, but junkyards here are like more expensive than buying new sometimes. And uh, yeah, I can't seem to find any captain's chairs for cheap online. So I was thinking about maybe having some custom um, like foam work done on these to basically make little like bolsters right here that kind of hold you in and basically mimic captain's chairs, but in a bench seat. So far, so good. We have made it out of the driveway. Uh, a lot of the hills leaving my house they're like super windy hills so you just can't get speed to go ahead and like hit them fast you're just slow chugging up and hopefully the truck can handle it the obs hates these hills uh this thing seems to be just chugging along you know 2500 rpms don't know what gear we're in i have a feeling these trucks don't have very many gears because it really likes to sit in this gear she's cruising and holding a pretty decent speed now i know we're talking an empty trailer but i'm like 45 minutes into this drive i'm watching my temps and everything's looking good um, I'm taking like the back roads of back roads to avoid having to go on a freeway or anything like that because obviously with no lights allegedly, uh, you know, I don't want to be making lane changes and stuff with no turn signals on the trailer. We're going on the roads, nobody's on, which added substantial time to my drive here today, but hey, it's a hell of a shakedown we're giving this truck right now. You guys know from time to time I like to spring things on Sergio. That's kind of what this is going to become. Let's see if Sergio's here for one and uh, available to help out with my issue. Sergio, I got a project for you. It's good you're working on a trailer. You'll be prepared. Sergio, look, I made it easy. I just, I just brought it to your side instead of my shop. Oh, okay, thanks uh, for that. All right, we got, we got a couple issues, Sergio, but I know you're the man. Okay. Number one, none of the trailer lights work. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's there, obviously. Wait till you see that rat's nest of wiring. Number two, the trailer brake controller doesn't work. Now, I've seen online, you can pop the controller out. It's, it's one of the factory ones. And supposedly there's like one pin that like the solder cracks. Okay. So we got to check that. First of, first of all, what? which trucks is this is mine. Is yours? I bought this from Danny. Remember, oh, that's like, the one? Yeah. I've never seen it. Like <laughs> because it never runs. It finally runs. Not so getting crazy. It's mostly on the. It's on the truck side. Okay, Everything's okay. on the truck side. The trailer's one? great. Trailer's okay. great. Yeah. It's Diamond C. Sergio's is uh yeah it's Ferrari of trailers. And I did the wiring. So. You did do the wiring on the trailer. Come look at this. This is before Danny started uh you know having you do some work on his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Easy, right? So That's if why. you just want to cut all that out and you have a new one of these sitting here, I, I wouldn't hate you for that. Okay, yeah, I have a new one. Let's, let's just do that. While you're doing that, I'm going to pull out. <laughs> the thing that worries me is the brake controller you're saying. Like, it's a factory one, though. Yeah, I know, but, but I, it's I, even worse. <laughs> yeah, well, if it does, like, we're going to give it one shot at this soldered pin. If not, I'm going to go buy an aftermarket one. Okay. And then, yeah, we're not going to mess with the factory one more you're than... You're going to play with it, right? I'm going to play with it. Yeah, I got you, Sergio. <laughs> It's now. All right, guys, let's see if we can pop out the trailer brake controller. Look, looks a lot easier on the YouTubes. Okay, so apparently there's a little clip in the back we have to push. There we go. All right, now we got her out. Oh, kind of, there we go. Got to gotta push that little button down right there, and then she comes out. All right, y'all, so while we're working on the 6 we had uh, Adrian pull up in his Tundra, and I noticed, first of all, 
you guys know I'm a big fan. GM tow mirrors for the world, right? Like they look good on pretty much every vehicle. So Adrian's got the GM tow mirrors here from Boost Auto. Adrian, give us a little quick little walk around of your truck here, dude. This thing's clean. Here we go. So yeah, I got the 1552s on 35s, 20 inch rims. I got the uh, Icon 2.5, uh, the reservoirs. What running boards are these? Seems like uh, pretty... Those are the uh, Go Rhinos. Okay. The Go Rhinos. They're pretty burly. Yeah. <laughs> so the Raptor, I guess, uh, running board. I got Sergio hooking up my trailer with lights right now for my company. There you go. So Sergio also hooked up your mirrors and everything functions yes, like sir. it should from the oh, factory, yeah, right? Yeah. What do we do with the trailer? You got your own business? Got my own business. Yes, sir. I do uh, mobile alignments on uh, heavy duty suspension. I do a mobile. I come to you. So Sergio is hooking up with lights on the outside so I can work at night. I feel a little bad because I pulled up and I might have pulled Sergio off your trailer for a second no, no, to uh, <laughs> emergency work on mine. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your, you were telling me. So obviously we're talking like semi trucks, dump semi -trucks, trucks, all that yeah, stuff. All the, all the heavy duty uh, equipment, uh, okay. heavy duty trucks, trailers. Nice. Uh, and you said you've been doing it for 20 years and you just went years. on your own this year. So I'm all about telling people stories and how they started businesses and I like to inspire people to go out and start your own business how's it been since you started your business it's been going real good busy real busy nice yeah that's it's, good yeah. it was worth making the jump oh yeah for sure there you go was it scary the first time it you went was, from it was, it was scary. a paycheck to yeah hoping somebody calls yeah, you it was scary yeah the wife was even scarier than me yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice well can we let I me mean, is, is yeah, your trailer yeah, deck yeah, out yeah, let's yeah. go check out your trailer i feel like i've seen you on instagram um, I, I started following you. Okay, okay. I've been, I've been following your YouTube for a while. Well, here it is right here. I've got the air jacks to pick up those uh, fire trucks like nothing. There you go. Sure. Damn, those things are massive, yeah. bro. How much do those weigh? Those weigh, uh, I think they're about uh, 200 pounds each. Ooh. Yeah, the capacity is 24,000. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> That's yeah. wild. All right, all right. We got a bunch of rollers. I've ordered. Those so, are my uh, rear uh, tandem um, alignment machine. Okay. So I hooked up to the back. I have a laser alignment. And uh, so we're not talking chalk on the ground alignments. No. A little little step up from that. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well, I, do, I do work for uh, Corny Tire. I do his big stuff too. There you go. Nice, dude. Nice. That's stuff. right. So if anybody needs anything big aligned, there you go. Kingpins, I like the name too. We got any perico in here? We got the kingpins. Sergio, what'd you, what'd you find in there, Sergio? So check out this little setup. I actually just saw this go viral the other day. So this is, did you buy this on like Amazon or Amazon, something? Amazon, yeah. Amazon, all right. So we've got a Milwaukee battery adapter. That's what's gonna power all the lights on the trailer off of, well, either NATO, but you said you're gonna get a 12 I mean, I bet this thing will power for quite a while. So Sergio's wired up a bunch of lights up right there in the ceiling. Oh, and we got oh, we got lights everywhere, and we got the same lights that I'm using in my dump trailer. Right, right there. Wait, you can see them right there. Those are actually what these are for. They're meant to like mount on the side of trailers and point down. We mounted them in the corners of my dump trailer. So you're just gonna get this all hooked up. We'll see how this works. I'm excited. Also, if any of you guys uh, owe your life to Snap On, if you put your <laughs> your toolbox in a trailer, they can't find you to repossess it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he is gonna be able to also switch if he's plug into his truck mm -hmm. he will have an extra switch to choose between the battery or the truck so nice there you go sergio look at that redundancy we like redundancy we're gonna open this up and see if we have the broken solder issue we need some little boogers right there thankfully sergio's got a bunch of little tools so we're just gonna go commandeer those right now look at that we got it right on the first try t7 there's got to be more to it than that screw all right Come found a couple up. of screws on the back we're currently watching a youtube video on how to fix this sergio's uh mentoring and me you know we're going to be resoldering <laughs> some connections inside this board down here a little screws holding it all together but maybe maybe i'll be damned it's got a lot easier once we took those out this is sergio's work all finished up got the battery installed boom we got inside lights those we got the ones over the toolbox and then all of the exterior lights you can see right there we got side side and then rear um, and then this switch right here will allow you to switch between uh, running off the truck battery once it's hooked up to the trailer connector or um, switch it back to run off the Milwaukee battery. So pretty cool setup there. Sergio's top secret stuff. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. Whenever he goes uh, reverse on his truck and his plug-in, yeah. the back light will turn on also. There you go. Nice, Sergio. All right, so apparently these pins right here are the issue. And if you have the problem, you're going to see this tiny little ring around them, which is like, I don't really know that I'm seeing that, but maybe you could see it right there. According to the video I watched, which also like you could barely tell, but it looked a little more than this. Uh, that means it was a cold solder joint and it didn't really take. I don't know. Looking at this, I don't know. <laughs> we might be hope hopeful that that's the issue because this is an easy fix. Otherwise, we're either replacing this for 150 bucks or we're buying an aftermarket one. And the problem is 
I guess we can bypass this. If this is unplugged though, it's gonna still throw the trailer fault code, which if you've ever driven a 6.0 or I guess this version or generation of Ford, uh, it beeps a lot and it gets really annoying. All right, Sergio doesn't want to work with it, Dusty. Smart man, smart man. <laughs> Got the best guy on the job here. You know, I was gonna solder, but I was like, let's just see, you know, if Sergio remembers how to solder from yeah, electrical wild, engineering yeah. school. <laughs> so which one do you think, sir? This two? Yeah, but one's really looks bad. I mean, and by bad, I mean barely. So it's on. Get this one. This one is the one that has the, this one has the ring around it, apparently, like the video. Okay. But you might as well just do both, because apparently those ones are the issue. I don't really know. Hope it works, but then we can't even test it on the trailer, because, <laughs> The wiring's not done yet. It doesn't work like at all. There's no connection from that seven pin to the trailer as far as I know. Here we go, here we go. We got a surgeon over here. Uh oh, Sergio pulled out the defibrillator. Uh, what are we reading, doctor? Continuity. Okay, continuity. That's a potentiometer switch right there. I came up with that on my own <laughs> from that YouTube video I just watched. We good? You know what pot pot potentiometer is? Yeah, dude, that's how you just like to, to gain on the trailer brake. We squeeze oh, it, does it, mean? it increases power. <laughs> is, that, is that it? Was that close? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> what it does is it's a, a resistor, mainly. Okay. But you can change the value. Every time you press it, the resistance changes. Gotcha. So that... So we get more or less voltage. Correct, it changes the voltage. So this thing knows when I receive this amount of voltage means you're pressed like halfway. If this amount of voltage means a quarter way. Okay, like okay. So you got, every day I get more and more certified when I hang out with Sergio. Mm, yeah. so this Look at is that. Working. Look at that freaking super Shoot. sweet little multimeter there. It's the same thing. It's just I can charge more now. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that was the issue and really everything else. I don't know. Does everything else look fine? Like are these, these aren't solder joints, are they? No, those are holders. Okay, as far as I can see, I don't know what I'm looking at. I checked these, uh, they have not released any electrolyte, so we're good. What? I don't know, I said something like that. Really? What are these capacitors? Mm -hmm. It is? They blow pretty cool when they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we don't want them to blow up. Yeah, you will see in the uh, lab at school, Yeah. you will see the, <laughs> the roof of all the capacitors. <laughs> oh jeez. Sticking to the wall, onto the roof. All right, well, we're gonna hope that doesn't happen. Should I get a little inspection or anything else? You know, there's so many things to look at. Like how would you yeah, tell any of that was? It just, yeah. If this to... doesn't work, I'll spend 150 bucks and buy a new one. Yeah. So, so 150 time? bucks is cheaper yeah. than uh, Sergio reading the diagram. Yeah, like three hours of my time is, will be the same as... I thought you were six bucks an hour. No. Seven now? Seven. All right. <laughs> now, obviously, without the trailer wiring being hooked up, we can't really tell if it's going to break a trailer, but the truck tells you if there's a fault. So let's see. We'll hook her back up. We haven't put it all back together yet because there's really no point if we don't know that it works. Oh, I almost just dropped it. Moment of truth. Ready. All right, so far nothing. Let's hit the button. It says check trailer, but that doesn't mean there's a fault on this. That just means that just means there's an issue back there. It's not throwing a code. It was throwing a TBC trailer brake controller code. Okay. We don't have that now. That's a good sign, Sergio. There you go. All right. Oh, you fix it. Teamwork, Sergio. We we fixed it. Right, guys, check this out. Oh, jeez, hold on. There's something on my lens. All right. Look at this cool freaking website. Start my car. Dot com. Look at it. it brings up the fuse blocks and it tells you what each one does mm -hmm. That's pretty cool sir. Yeah. That's that's why you get the big bucks dog seven bucks an hour if somebody can uh, Make an app for this Oh ooh, Big money Sergio. big money. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a freaking 3d. Yeah, that is cool so I found out one blown fuse. All right. I got one blown fuse yeah. so far. So you have no insurance signal uh, You're still banking on the fact that that wiring is decent. It is yeah, it's decent. Have you tested it? No, but first we have to have power to test it. Sergio's convinced we might just have a bunch of blown fuses, which probably tells me there's a bigger issue somewhere, but... See, Ford was smart, you know, when your truck breaks down, if it's cold out, you don't want to be pulling fuses out no, outside, outside under the hood, you know? Yeah. You get the whole dang fuse box under here. Okay, ground here, ground everywhere. All right, Sergio's uh, checking fuses here. Yeah, I need the engine. I need, I need the engine. Okay. Can you bring my computer here? All right, all right. So our uh, so we trailer 20, park lamps are blown. 20, a 10. Okay. You know, guys, we might just get away with that shoddy wiring back there. Most important is, the, well, no, I guess lights are more important right now. 
Brake control is more important if we are actually gonna put some stuff in the trailer, which uh, I wasn't expecting to do all this today, so it's eating up all the time. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have time to go to the material yard, so I might have to do that tomorrow. At least we'll know we'll have everything fixed. See my special tool to pull out pieces? Yeah, what do you got? Oh man, high tech. High tech. That's like seven bucks an hour right there. All right, give us some lights, Sergio. Let's see, I don't see any running lights on. And no lights, Sergio, no lights. <laughs> Tony, I don't trust whatever is going on there. We've got no connection. I see a couple pink wires there. <laughs> All right. Uh, God, what a rat's nest. And that right here, look, it's almost cut off this one. Yeah, Some right. plastic. The ground one is the one that worries me because that's the one that gives power to everything. Replace it or fix it? Well, whatever's easiest, man. If replacing it's easiest, I mean, it's kind of crappy. Trailer brakes and stuff are kind of important. If it's easier for you to swap it, swap it. If it's easier for you to like try those two wires, this is so the, we need one that plugs into that. Yeah. Would be make our life easy. Yeah. And you know where to find one that does that? Yeah. Well then let's get me working by connecting whatever wires you think will make it work. And then order me one of those bad boys and we'll be good to go. All right, so we're gonna test this this connector here because we should have something coming to here. And we have nothing. Oh, we got something? Oh, okay, okay, bad ground, bad ground. Come on, ground, come on, ground. There you go. Oh yeah, we got turn signal. Ground, turn yep. signals, ground, 12 volts. This is reverse. This should be the brake control. Um, do you wanna hold it? Is it flashing? All right, so Sergio says he's getting signal in the back. See how we're looking? There we go, look at that. Look at that. Trailer brake controller is fixed. So now what, Sergio? Where's our uh, disconnect? Okay, this is good. That means the problem is from here to this thing. Okay. So all these wires are twisted yeah. and jacked up. Okay. That's the one that's probably dead. Gotcha. All right, that's pretty easy fix right there. For man with your uh, accolades. A dollar a minute. A dollar a minute? So since I'm at Sergio's, you know, in this trailer, I haven't left it plugged in for a little bit. You know, we might as well charge the batteries back up in her for a second. Oh, you know. Sergio, as part of, per California, um, I'm homeless, so you have to give me free electricity to charge my stuff because I'm green. Or what? something like that, I don't know. Really? I don't know. I'm sure that law will be on the books at some point. Sergio, check the ground. We have ground. That, that wire is decent. But we're gonna connect the other ones and see. Because if that wire is decent, we should have something else working, but nothing's working. Let me see what's going on. So if we have ground, we should have something else. Mm -hmm. Not this whole thing doesn't work. <laughs> oh, we got one. Left turn. Left turn. Someone's doing this. Pretty cool little tester Sergio has there. Hey, keep it down. What's going on, Sergio? What do you see? <laughs> Is it broken in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Great. So maybe we're starting over. <laughs> we have to replace them. I tried to tell you from the beginning. So Sergio's out here working. Now that the shades rolled in, it was our first day of like 70 something degree weather. I was loving it, but now that there's no more sun, it's getting cold. We got the work for it canvas work jacket, keeping me warm. These things are freaking awesome. You guys can still order one, workfortapparel.com. Look at that, quilted on the inside, super warm. And you know, I gotta deal with the uh, political BS of Carhartt. <laughs> I was unbolting them. Sergio said this would be quicker. Yeah, man, they broke. I'd have had them off already. They were working. You broke one. <laughs> they came off better. I snapped it quicker with the socket than I did. <laughs> you cut them off. And don't worry, guys. Sergio's wearing safety contacts. He, they're in his eyes. <laughs> so you can see on here, this is definitely 100% aftermarket. You can see where the factory holes were, and then where uh, somebody drilled some holes to get those. <laughs> this one in. Okay. Any flathead? <laughs> Your style, yeah. Sergio. Yeah. Like your style. It works. You want to cut that so you can get your wires in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything's getting nice and heat shrinked on. We've got our new plug. Sergio crimped the wires before he remembered uh, to slide them through here, so we had to just cut a little notch right there, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Sergio. You I had, had to mention that. I had to mention that, Sergio. <laughs> They're going to ask. You know, oh, somebody's okay, going to okay. be like, oh, how dare oh, yeah, you? Yeah. How do you do it, man? Yeah, I don't know. Alrighty, she's on. Freaking brand new. Alrighty guys, we are all back in good shape. We are legal, we got some lights on. We've got brakes so we're safe. Far cry from where we were this morning. Again, unfortunately I wish I had time to get uh, some aggregate in here, but those yards closed down pretty early, so that's not gonna happen, but look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Got a flashers going. Now, it's probably better we test towing up the grade 
without uh, lagging an extra, you know, 4,000 pounds or so in there uh, or more. It should be able to, to handle more. The plan is it can handle a lot more than that. My excavator weighs about seven to 8,000 pounds. So my plan with buying the 6.0 was it would be able to tow my excavator because there's just no way uh, to comfortably tow that with my 7.3, even though everybody in the world claims, oh, they tow, you know, 30,000 pound dozers with theirs, but mine don't like that. So I bought this truck to hopefully be able to do that and not need to use one of the nice trucks um, to take the excavator to and from job site. Will that happen? Only time will tell. Will this thing run long enough? Only time will tell. But a huge thank you to Sergio for always coming in clutch and saving me on days where I just show up with a project for him. He's always very good about that. So make sure you guys go check him out, iep-usa.com. Uh, let's see, she's fired up so far every time for me. All right, still firing up. Let's double check that our brakes are working. There we go, look at that, everything working great. Woo, perfect. We're starting to climb the first grade. So far, we're holding steady, 43, 42 miles an hour, 20, just under 2,500 RPMs. Now this is the easy grade though. It's the second grade that we gotta go up. It's just so long that uh, it eats vehicles alive. You always see trucks and motor homes and stuff pulled over because uh, yeah, they just don't do well on it. I have also pulled over there a time or two in my OPS. We are on the second grade and I'm watching that temp gauge like a hawk and everything is looking good. Okay, happy to see you guys. We made it to the ranch. First successful tow test. Well, I, I guess we call it a success. There's technically a trailer hooked up. It was technically a tow test. The Peacock is uh, excited that we're home. Everything went well. Fingers crossed that this repair lasts longer than the last couple of times we've done this. Tomorrow, there's a chance of rain. Otherwise, I would continue this video and uh, go get the load of aggregate that we're supposed to be getting, but I don't wanna do that in the rain. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now. Jeez. Okay, apparently the peacock wants to do my outro. Uh, don't forget to give this video a like and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.